In this glass are two liquids with very different properties. The top layer is oil and the bottom layer is water. Oil and water don't mix with each other, no matter how hard I try to mix them together. Oil and water are both made up of molecules, and molecules result when atoms covalently bond with one another. A covalent bond forms when atoms share their electrons. It's how the electrons are being shared, as well as the shape of the molecule, that determines the function of that molecule. Oil and water don't mix because their functions are so different. The shapes of their molecules are really different, and the electrons are being shared differently. This video is all about molecules and how they mix. So what are we going to learn in this video? First we will learn what makes a bond polar and what makes a bond nonpolar. Then we will learn how the shape of a molecule affects the polarity of a molecule. Finally, we'll learn how molecules stick together according to their intermolecular forces. Sometimes the electrons within a bond are not being shared evenly. A covalent bond is sort of like a tug of war, and sometimes one of the elements is a bit stronger than the other element. This strength is measured as an element's electronegativity. We can determine if elements are sharing electrons evenly by comparing their electronegativity. We calculate the difference, it's the symbol delta E. We can use a chart like this that has all the different electronegativities of the elements on the periodic table. To calculate it, you take the larger number and subtract it from the smaller number of the two elements within the chemical bond. If your answer is between 0 and 0 0.4, the electrons are being shared evenly. This is called a nonpolar bond. If your answer is between 0 0.5 and 1.9, the electrons are not shared evenly. The element with the greater electronegativity is attracting the electrons in the bond closer to itself. Since the electrons are pulled closer to that element, and the electrons are negatively charged, the element will have a slightly negative charge. We show that with the symbol delta negative. The other element will have a slightly positive charge, and we show that with the symbol delta positive. This is called a polar bond, because there are two poles in this bond that is a separation of charge. Now, a molecule could have polar bonds but be nonpolar overall. To be polar, the molecule must have an overall dipole. A dipole means that there's separation of charge. That is, one side of the molecule will have a slightly negative charge and the other side will have a slightly positive charge. Here's an example of a polar molecule. The carbon and hydrogen will be a nonpolar bond because the difference in electronegativity is 0.4. The carbon and fluorine, however, will be a polar bond, based on its difference in electronegativity. There will be a delta negative on the fluorine, and then a delta positive on the carbon. Separation of charge makes this molecule polar overall. Here's another example. This is a nonpolar molecule. All the bonds in this molecule are polar, so there are delta negatives all around the outside, and then in the center there's a delta positive. There's no overall dipole. The negatives are all cancelling each other out. If I look at one extreme of the molecule, I can see a partial negative, and I move all the way to the other side, there's a partial negative as well. So there isn't a separation of charge. So this is nonpolar overall. A quick test to determine if a molecule is polar or nonpolar is to check if the molecule is symmetrical. In general, symmetrical molecules are nonpolar. When we consider symmetry, we need to consider the shape of a molecule in three dimensions. The shape is explained by a theory called Vesper theory, which stands for Valent Shell Electron Pair Repulsion Theory. This theory says that regions of electrons around a central atom will try to get as far away from each other as possible. Because like charges repel, negative will repel negative. So if there are four electron regions in a two-dimensional molecule, it's going to look like this, because this is as far as those electron regions, i.e. the chemical bonds, are going to be able to move away from each other with still remaining attached to the central atom. An electron region can either be a covalent bond, that could be a single, double, or triple bond, they all just count as one region, or it could be a lone pair of electrons. NH3 and CH4 both have four electron regions. The CH4 has four bonds, while the NH3 has three bonds and one lone pair. A lone pair isn't the same as a bonding pair of electrons. Electrons are sort of spread out when they're in a bond, but when they're in a lone pair, they create a dense region of negative charge. So CH4 and NH3 both have four electron regions, but CH4 is symmetrical while NH3 is not symmetrical. There's a dense region of electrons on the NH3. This creates a negative region on the molecule, so it has a dipole. 
Here's another example. Carbon dioxide looks like this, and H2O, water, looks like this. Both of them look linear when drawn in two dimensions, but we need to think about these in three dimensions. How are the electron regions going to spread out? In 3D, CO2 is still linear. However, H2O looks like this in 3D. The regions of electrons are trying to spread out as far as they can from one another in 3D. Notice that the lone pairs are here on the top, and there's a dense region of electrons where these lone pairs are located. So water is polar, and it's actually better to draw it like this in 2D to show that the lone pairs of electrons are located together near the top of the molecule. Molecules like to stick together with molecules that have similar polarity. Nonpolar molecules like to stick with nonpolar molecules, and polar molecules like to stick with polar molecules. This is the reason oil and water do not mix with each other. Oil is nonpolar, whereas water is polar. Intermolecular forces are the forces that keep oil molecules stuck to each other and the water molecules stuck to each other. There are three major types of intermolecular forces. London dispersion forces are the weakest of all the intermolecular forces. Although they exist between all molecules, they are only really evident between nonpolar molecules. Dispersion forces occur when the positively charged nucleus of atoms of one molecule attract the negatively charged electrons in the atoms of another molecule. It's an extremely weak attraction. However, the larger the atom or molecule, the larger the attraction will be. Methane, ethane, propane, and butane are all gases because their molecules do not stick together very strongly. They're really, really small molecules. Octane, on the other hand, is a liquid. It's a bigger molecule, so the dispersion forces are stronger. Dipole forces are stronger than London dispersion forces. The dipole of a polar molecule will attract to the dipole of another polar molecule, like this carbon to fluorine bond. The partially positive carbon will stick to a partially negative fluorine from another molecule. This is much stronger than a London dispersion compound, so compounds that exhibit dipole forces tend to be liquids at room temperature. The third intermolecular force is called hydrogen bonding. This is a special kind of dipole force. It's kind of like a super strong dipole force. The hydrogen bond occurs between molecules that contain hydrogen bonded to oxygen, or hydrogen bonded to nitrogen, or hydrogen bonded to fluorine. Since hydrogen is so incredibly small, when it bonds to an extremely electronegative atom like oxygen, nitrogen, or fluorine, a supercharged dipole will form. Hydrogen has a really big slightly positive, and the oxygen, nitrogen, or fluorine will have a really big slightly negative. Hydrogen bonding is much stronger than a regular dipole interaction, so tiny molecules like water that can hydrogen bond will be liquids at room temperature. So did you learn everything in this video? Well, if you did, you learned that atoms share electrons in a covalent bond. However, sometimes the electrons are not shared evenly. When an atom with a high electronegativity is sharing electrons with an atom that has a low electronegativity, a polar bond is formed. The shape of a molecule contributes to the polarity of the molecule. In general, symmetrical molecules are not polar. Intermolecular forces are attractive forces between molecules. And there are three major types of intermolecular forces. London dispersion forces are the weakest, dipole forces are stronger, and hydrogen bonding are the strongest intermolecular force.